Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got a very interesting case here. We've got two problems with this ear. The first being, um, this is a mild case of a titus externa, so we're examining the outer ear at the moment, just here. And you can see it's quite red, crusty. Um, there are some cracks in the skin, some fissures in the skin, which uh, the patient did report had been bleeding and uh, was quite uncomfortable. And uh, unfortunately, one of these fissures did actually start bleeding during the procedure. But uh, nothing too intense. There's not going to be tons of blood, just a tiny little bit. And um, it was unavoidable, unfortunately, because I'm having to, as I'm doing the procedure, I'm having to touch the, you know, the ear, which is obviously very sore. So um, that's the first problem, the otitis externa. The second is, as you can see, the, the ear canal is, is full of uh, wax and dead skin. And uh, which is unfortunately probably the, the, the worst consistency to deal with because it's not quite soft enough such that we can just kind of latch onto it and draw it out. Um, but it's not hard enough such that we can hook it out all in one big chunk. So it's, it's the type of wax that we'll have to really work on, be patient with. And uh, throughout this procedure, you'll see me apply copious amounts of, of olive oil to try and make progress here. But I really did need to make a lot of progress here because Immediately after this consultation, um, the patient had pre-arranged an appointment with their doctor and the, the doctor pr basically prescribed otomize, which is a, a common treatment in the UK for, for um, otitis externa. You can see that bleeding just there, so the, the external ear looks very sore at the moment. Um, and that's, that's the point where it's bleeding is the point where I, I really do need to just lift up the cartilage to actually gain access to the ear. But um, the patient didn't, didn't find that particularly uncomfortable. Um, so I really needed to get rid of as much debris as possible to give the medicine a chance to actually get down in there and, and be as effective as possible. Um, and I mentioned that in a previous video, actually. If, you, if you're interested in sort of ear infections or titus externa and, and the relationship, relationship between that and dead skin buildup, then um, I'll link the acute diffuse desquamation video in the description box um, so you can check that out. So there's that fissure there looking very sore. Um, so again, we're going to just gently strip this away and, uh, and make progress very slowly, uh, but it just takes a bit of patience. Um, so this is the first half of the video. The second half, you're going to see the same patient, exactly the same ear, but 10 days later after they've had the otomize. Um, and just here, you can see this white debris on the right hand side. I don't think that's anything nasty. I don't think that's any fungal growth. I, uh, fungal growth. I just think that's desiccated skin. So, um, so just to explain a little bit about what otomize is, it's not something that I would prescribe as an audiologist. It has to be prescribed by um, someone's general practitioner, so a family doctor or an ENT doctor, someone of uh, basically a physician of some kind. And um, it has what, well, it has the holy trinity basically of, of ingredients, it would seem, to treat uh, an ailment of this kind. So um, it contains a steroid, which is dexamethasone, and a steroid will, will basically reduce any inflammation. Um, it will reduce any swelling, edema. Um, edema is just a you know, fluid collecting in tissue, essentially, which leads to swelling. So um, you've probably heard of pulmonary edema before, where you get fluid in your lungs, um, or you, you probably see edema quite often, actually. So it's, it's not uncommon in elderly patients with heart problems. They have a, a swelling in their feet and their ankles and their legs. Um, and that's simply because the heart is not pumping blood around their system quite as effectively. Um, so fluid pools in their, in their legs. Um, so the dexamethasone will, will deal with the inflammation. Um, and then the, the otomize has two ingredients to deal with foreign invaders. So bacteria, essentially, that's causing the infection. Um, so the first is acetic acid, otherwise known as vinegar. Uh, and vinegar has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. To, to deal with um, disease and infection, or as far back as ancient Greece. Um, and it's been used classically for, for cleansing wounds and things like that. So even back then, they knew that it was as a, a good, good in the form of medicine. Um, and we're still using it today in otomize. Um, so the, the acetic acid is very good at dealing with bacteria and funguses. Um, and in a way, it's, it's definitely a good thing to have because it can deal with biofilms. So biofilms are essentially little colonies of bacteria that form and proliferate. So um, plaque on your teeth and obviously biofilms can form on dead skin inside the ear canal. 
Um, so that little white arrow that just appeared there, um, that's just showing you a little window that we've created through to the eardrum. So we are making progress just very slowly. Um, so, uh, so acetic acid is, is extremely useful. Uh, and then the other ingredient is uh, an antibiotic drug called neomycin. And uh, neomycin has a very interesting mechanism of action. So it, what it does is it actually goes inside the bacteria and stops that bacteria from producing proteins, which it needs to, you know, do jobs and, and you know, function as, a, as, a, as an organism. So uh, and you can think of proteins like, uh, they're sort of like the, the Lego of the cell world, I suppose. So they're made up, proteins are made up of chunks of, of amino acids. So amino acids are just lots of, of, of atoms um, that are joined together. And then the body, you, you know, builds these proteins using amino acids like you would build Lego, you would build like a car out of Lego. And um, the body will, will basically build these amino acids together in different shapes and forms to make proteins. And these proteins can be in, come in lots of different shapes and sizes and coils and spirals and folds and things like that. And um, the cell can then use these proteins to do different jobs. So, um, you know, it can aid in giving the cell structure it can uh, act as little transporters to transport uh, molecules from one part of the cell to the other. So they're very, very important. They're, they're like tools, essentially, for the body and for the cells. And um, the neomycin goes into the bacteria and stops the bacteria from making those proteins properly. And if the bacteria can't do that, then it's not going to last very long. And if the bacteria can't do that, then it's not going to last very long, essentially. So um, that's how it works. Um, and the, in this particular case, the otomize was very effective. Um, so you can see I've just applied a lot of olive oil here. And what we're dealing with at the moment is essentially just this huge chunk of wax caught in this recess just before the, um, just before the eardrum. Um, so it's basically a, a very deep trench. In this particular case, it was very, very deep trench. And uh, what you're seeing here is sort of a, an iceberg situation. So this sort of very dark wax right in the back there uh, obscuring most of the eardrum. You can see that just the top bit of it, um, but it was very difficult to get this last piece, um, primarily because it just wasn't ready to come out. And I, I probably could have cajoled it a little bit more, um, but again, it, it was very difficult to get access here, partially due to the, the, the swelling, um, but also just it's in a very awkward position. And um, the last thing I wanted to do was just, you know, jab at it and be very rough. Um, because we are close to the eardrum, we have to be mindful of that. So at the moment, I'm just sort of manipulating it and touching it, seeing if I can if I can loosen it up, um, but it's just not happening. Uh, so I'm using a fine end gauge at the moment, uh, which has a slight bend in it, um, which I do sometimes just to give me better access, um, even though the access was very difficult in this ear. Um, and thankfully, the Otomize not only worked to, you know, reduce inflammation and... Um, you know, resolve the infection, um, but it also loosened this huge chunk of wax right up so I could actually leverage it out of this recess. So it was, uh, you know, good timing. So I'm just seeing a little bit of movement here, but it's really not enough to, um, you know, to give me any kind of opportunity here. And you can see the eardrum just poking through there. It's the slightly gray skin right in the center of the frame there. Um, that white debris on the left-hand side is just desiccated skin, just dead skin. So nothing, nothing negative there. Um, and just trying from a different angle here, but again, it's, I'm really not going to get purchase on this. You can see that there is oil there. There is oil down there. You can see it glistening. Um, but uh, and the machine is cranked up at this point to around minus 500 millimeters of mercury. So it's you know fairly powerful my suction machine. Um, which I'll show you in a future video, um, but nothing is really working to uh, to loosen this up. So again, I've just applied some more olive oil, which is uh, smearing up the endoscope quite beautifully. And I'm going to go in. Ah, so here is ten days later. So I didn't realise it was coming this early. So you can see the outer ear is looking much much better. It's not quite as red. There's some dry skin around, but all those cracks in the skin have gone, thanks to the otomize. So we've now got some ordinary brown wax uh, at the periphery and we're just going to remove this just to give us better access. And 
when you when we actually go in and see that sort of gigantic log next to the eardrum, um, what you'll see is it looks a little bit more prominent, a little bit more buoyant. Um, so I rather suspect that it absorbed some of those drops and uh, it's now in a position to come out, obviously. So there it is. And we're just going to remove a little bit more just to give us an opportunity to get a clear path in there. There we go. And again, once, uh, as always, I'll, uh, I'll lay all this out on the tissue so you can see the centimeter amount that we've removed. And uh, I'll give you a shot of the tank as well. I think it's always very useful to see exactly what has been removed. Um, maybe I should start weighing it like Neil. That would be quite good, quite useful. So now we can see this very, very dark oxidized wax. I'm going in with the fine end just to see if I can loosen it up. And already we can see we've got some movement here. Now, as I mentioned before, it's a bit like uh, we're sort of getting an iceberg effect. And what you can see really is only the top third of what we're going to remove here. So it really was quite a gigantic piece. I was not expecting such a huge amount. But uh, when everything's cleared up, you'll see just how deep this recess actually goes. So I was loosening it up here and now we're finally getting some movement. And you'll be able to see on the underbelly of this huge piece of wax, you'll see there's white splodges. Again, that's desiccated skin, dead skin. And now we can finally see just the gigantic plug in its own right, really. And you wouldn't think that such a large amount of wax can be hidden in that recess. Um, so it's understandable why the patient couldn't hear very well. So after the first consultation, they felt that there was a little bit of improvement, but not much. And you can see why, seeing as this was shoved up right against the eardrum. So at this point, it's, it's actually so large that I'm actually struggling to get it out of the ear canal. So we're going to have to switch back to a, a regular suction probe here. So again, this is the fine end, but it's just not cutting it. So I'll go back in with a regular probe and I should be able to drag it out quite successfully here. And this is just sort of peripheral wax, ordinary brown wax. This isn't the plug. And this plug will actually, unfortunately, break in two. So it's not going to be one huge, glorious boulder like, um, like you're probably expecting. But uh, still a fair amount here. So again, I'm just wriggling it out to see if I can just get purchase on it. So that's the first bit that's broken off. And then this here is the main bit. It's quite in interesting to see the underside of it where all the dead skin is. So there we have it. And now let's take a good look inside at the eardrum. And we'll be able to see it. The eardrum is actually obscured by this sort of hill, um, which so you can understand why it was able to hide such a huge amount of wax. So it's that gray skin in the background there. We'll just mop up and then get a better look. And this sort of soft brown wax around the exterior, that's pretty good. That's pretty healthy. Given the fact that the patient has recently had a Titus external, I don't want to get rid of all of this. I just want to clean up all those little bits of dead skin because that's not good. But ordinary soft brown wax is fine. That will protect the patient from future infection. And one final look at the eardrum. And we can see here the aftermath of what we removed. So we're looking at about probably a centimeter, centimeter and a half, just, for, just pulling that out of the recess, which is quite a large amount considering it's such a you know it's such a small space and yet it can conceal so much wax and uh, the fine end there is just the one with the purple sleeve and here is the tank again not no huge chunks but again lots of just small flakes here that we've removed so there we go i hope you found this video interesting it's always good to see a before and after and uh I just touched on the, the information about the medicine and acetic acid. I think that's very interesting as well. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave it down in the comment section below and I will try and get back to you. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.